as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, reporting live from the cam. High in demand, so please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans. On court, talking sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez. You heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your topics and uh -huh. we ahead of the Yo. streets. It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend. Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in. You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind. Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9. For the older folks, so even if you're younger, no matter what sport, this show, we got it covered. It's filmed live in the middle of BK, so ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. What's really good, and welcome back to another virtual episode and a collaboration episode of Real Fans Real Talk with The Sanchez Show. As always, I'm your host, Eric Sanchez, a.k.a. Legend of Two Games. Got my man, Anthony Jones, a.k.a. Trip Young with me. Trip, how you doing today, bro? Man, I'm good. I, I cannot complain. I'm actually, I'm, I'm in a great mood. NFL free agency season started, got got lit. Um, You know, we got, we got the tournament starting right now. Like, it's looking good outside, man. Absolutely. As, as we spring forward now into the spring season, we got baseball right around the corner. We're about a week and a half away from the start of a new Major League Baseball season. Um, we got the NCAA tournament going on. We're in the last third of the NBA season, which is shaping up to be a great uh, run into the playoffs. But we got to start with the NFL and we ain't talking about free agency. We got to start with the biggest news of the week. Unfortunately, this thing has continued to snowball. And we're talking about Deshaun Watson. For those that don't know, Earlier this week, he was accused of sexual misconduct by three women. And then it started to snowball. And now as we record this um, on Saturday, March 20th, it's up to 12 women where they send possibly even as much as 22 women who are alleging to come forward with some sort of sexual misconduct by Deshaun Watson. Uh, in some cases, there's a woman who's claiming she was forced to perform oral sex on him. Other women claimed there was inappropriate touching and, and inappropriate uh, situations they were placed in by Deshaun Watson. The story's all over the place, bro. And I know we're still waiting for all the details to come out. But as we stand today, what were your thoughts originally when we heard about this report to where we're at at this time? Uh, all right. So originally, I was a little bit more on the Deshaun Watson side. Just because I felt like, all right, man, I think this is some BS. They trying to break down another black superstar. Um, you know, he wanted out of out of Houston. And now all of a sudden, all of this stuff just starts to to come out. And like you said, snowball effect. Um, now, just because of the number of women that we're at, I'm 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 in the middle. I'm still in the middle. I'm still going, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you know, placing judgment nowhere yet because I don't think we have nowhere near enough information in the situation. And I also feel like there are some outlining circumstances um, that are going on with this whole situation right now. So I'm still in the middle right now. Um, you know, we, we, we got to stick with the innocent until proven guilty. Um, that's what this, you know, one of the, the, the bases that this, you know, the principles this country was based on, right? So we have to give Deshaun Watson the benefit of the doubt in this situation. Um, I know there was like text messages that they said they had and whatnot, but even even with that stuff, um, you know, in the text messages, you know, if, if the one I saw was like accurate, it's not like, it, you know, there's a, an apology text from Deshaun Watson, but it doesn't specify what he's apologizing for. You know, so there's different stipulations than the, you know, the, the 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 issue with the lawyer, who just so happened to be the neighbor of the, well, I guess technically the previous owner because it was uh it was the Bob McNair who's the father, he's so he doesn't technically he doesn't own the team anymore, but I still feel like there's a little, you know, bit of uh, you know something there that we haven't been privy to just yet. I I understand that the Texans put out a statement saying that when the lawsuits were brought public. That was the first time that they had ever heard about that. However, 
in my heart, I feel like there's no way that if me and Eric is boys and Eric has a business and the number one asset in that business is about to, this, this whole thing is just about to go, go crazy. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to not hit up Eric and be like, yo, Eric, your man is out here wilding. You might need to get ahead of this thing. So I, you know, from that standpoint, I'm just like, you know, I'm a little bit iffy on that because I feel like if this thing is true, I feel like the, the, the owners knew about it already um, just because, you know, and then, you know, I'm reading articles from, you know, the, 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 the police department in Houston tweeted a statement after uh, Busby said that he had spoken to them and they put out a statement on Twitter saying that they never spoke to him that need anything and regarding criminal charges or anything like that, or just period, they haven't spoken to him. So there's a lot of things, a lot of moving parts that's going on here, which is why I'm still in the middle. I'm not throwing Deshaun Watson under the bus. I'm also not saying that, you know, these women are, are lying or anything like that. I need more information before I can make a, a serious, you know, summation of, of, of everything that's going on. Yeah, so I agree. I think that there's so many moving parts that we've got to give this thing time to see what all the facts are, first and foremost. And as you said, innocent until proven guilty. He's, uh, at the very least, should get his due process before we, we come down and, you know, give our ultimate ruling on how we feel about the situation. Now, in no way, shape, or form do we condone sexual misconduct or, or rape culture or anything like that. We've always stood firm on what we believe that to be. And like I always said, to me, that's a sucker move if you force yourself upon women and, and try to take advantage of women. Yeah. The, the text messages to me are interesting and the number of women at this point becomes very interesting because as I always say, where there's smoke, there's fire. And as much as I want this thing to work out well for Deshaun Watson, it's a young black man in America. We understand young black men don't get very many opportunities in this country. And when they do, they damn sure don't get second opportunities, right? If you mess up the first one. Yes. So from that standpoint, I want this to work out well for him. However, I am conflicted because again, with the number of women and now these text messages, until we get to see the text messages and until we get proper context as to what messages are being sent, it's, it's really tough to tell what's gonna happen right now. And it's really tough not to think some of this could be true. You know, I, from what I've read, I have not seen the text messages directly, but from what I've read in one of those messages, he apologizes to one of the women by saying, I apologize for putting you in an uncomfortable situation. Now, as you said, that could mean a number of things. They, they may have, she may have been invited to his residence or a place to give him a massage and maybe one of his boys was inappropriate and now he's apologizing for his boy. Um, you know, it, it could be a number of things, but it doesn't look good when you send a text message apologizing. Yes. You know, at the end of the day, yes, I'm a married man now, but at one time I was single. You are a single man. You know, there are times you're around women there. I can't think of a time I ever had to send a message to a woman afterwards and say, I apologize for putting you in an uncomfortable situation. Yeah. And, right. <laughs> I, I can't think of a time I've had to send that message. So I had to apologize for one of my boys. Doing, you know what I mean? Like, right. Yeah. With your friends, like it just hasn't gotten to that point. But, you know, and, and again, apologizing. We, that's that's the thing. We don't know because it could have been Correct. a situation where I'm just apologizing because shoot, because you had to come here and your car got towed. Anything could be possible. Right. We, don't we don't, again, we don't know the, the full scale, the context of, of the text. So I don't want to chastise and criticize them based off the text messages. We need more information. Yes. But I do think that the Texans organization knew this was coming. And here's why. Um, as you mentioned, the lawyer was neighbors to the, to the McNair family. I'm not sure if it was Bob directly or another family member. It was Bob. He lived right next door to Bob. Okay. And, and even still in that situation, that does not mean they were buddy, buddy. They may have just been neighbors in passing. You know, you see each other. Hey, it's a wealthy neighborhood. How, how's he doing? Hey, he's a lawyer. I'm an owner. Maybe we speak every now and then, but maybe we don't have much of a relationship. But the reason I think the Texans knew and to keep it purely sport and not speculate and try to turn this into a conspiracy is, the Texans' behavior to me, even before this news broke, was very odd. You and I both have said, why wouldn't you be fielding calls for, for Deshaun Watson if he wants out? Why wouldn't you at least hear what other teams are offering? You don't have a first-round pick this year. You don't have a first-round pick next year. You don't have the cap space to upgrade this talent. So if your best player wants out, it is your job as a front office to at least listen to offers and then make a judgment off those offers. I mean, 
the Seahawks don't want to move on from Russell Wilson, but they still listen to offers, right? Now, whether they decide to take the offer or not is their business. And I say that to say this, the fact that they were not even fielding offers and were not speaking to Deshaun Watson, to me, they knew this news was coming at some point. And this was the big joker. This was their ace in the hole. They knew if you're not going to pick up the phone for us when you want to request a trade, no problem. But when this news breaks, I guarantee you, you're going to want to speak with us and we're going to try to hash this thing out because it's in, it's in his best interest to have the organization stand side by side with him and help him through this process. In no way, shape or form does he want to come out of this looking like a creep or some sort of scumbag. And the best way to do that is to have the wealthy influence of ownership in the front office who are going to put their arm around your shoulder and say, nope, this is our guy. We know him to always be an upstanding citizen. And this doesn't sound like the Deshaun Watson that we know and we've grown to love. And ultimately, they're hoping this situation entices him to stick around in Houston for another year or two before they figure out what the long-term solution is there. But they knew this news was coming. I don't think they created the situation. I don't think they conspired with the lawyer to now make him look bad. I just think they had that ace in the hole. They had that big joker in their hand. And they knew when this news breaks, he's not going to want to get traded anymore. He's going to be willing to listen to us. No, I, I agree. Absolutely. Um, now, I do... I I want to play a little bit of devil's advocate here, uh, you know, with the with the all of these women that have come forward and the, and the attorney, because when we first got the got the the gist of everything that was going on, when it was just the the, the first girl, it was from an incident that happened allegedly happened in December of two thousand and twenty. So, the issue that I have is. Why is it as an attorney and, you know, why is it your first notion to not seek justice for these women? Why is it your first notion to try to get a check out of Deshaun Watson? So that's why I have an issue with this situation. And I'm not saying I'm not speaking on who's right, who did what, who didn't do what. I'm just saying from the standpoint of, especially in this situation where we're talking about something that stemmed from December of 2020. I don't know at what point she got with the lawyer or what, you know, what stage this happened, but I just feel like if there's a situation and I'm a lawyer, I'm going to be encouraging you to seek justice. And by seeking justice, I mean reporting this to the, the Houston Police Department. The first thing on my mind is not going to be to say, all right, let's go try to get a settlement out of Deshaun Watson. That's that's the only thing that I really have a problem with in this situation, just because we have seen far too many instances where women try to extort these celebrity men. And, and we got to be listen, we got to be honest, brothers, we, we out here, you know, we we move, we 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 not moving smart. OK, because you really need to be screening and vetting the people that you bring into your circle, no matter what shape or form the relationship is that you have with an individual person. And that's not even just women. That's that goes for, you know, what business relationships you have with men, women, whatever, whether it be personal, sexual, whatever it is, we really have to do a better vetting process with the people that you bring into your circle. You know, and I think that Deshaun Watson is going to, if this situation is able to be worked out, if, you know, if he's, if it comes out that he's not, you know, he hasn't done everything that they're saying he's done, I would hope that moving forward, he would understand that and he would, in his, in, in his selective process would, would be a thousand percent improved because these things do happen. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's why I was skeptical when I first heard the, the reports, because as you said, it's like, why, why are you going strictly or directly to civil court as opposed to seeking justice? Um, but then as I've read more about it and, and got a deeper understanding of, of the some of these allegations, I think, one, the lawyer viewed it as, in some of these cases, there was no sexual contact that took place. There were suggestions, there were, you know, a pushy nature by Deshaun, but because there was no intercourse and there's no way to, to really prove anything other than the conversation happened, it becomes very tough to bring up those charges because then it becomes a he said, she said. He'll say, nah, that conversation ever happened. She'll say, no, he, you know, he tried to touch me or he tried to make me touch him. 
and then it becomes a he said, she said, and then you can't prosecute it. But in civil suit, it becomes a lot easier to kind of prove it because all any of these women would need is that text message showing, look, there was inappropriate, um, you know, conduct on his end, or there was an inappropriate touch on his end. And so therefore it becomes easier. And I think that's why they went that way. Um, I agree with you, unfortunately, for, for some of these women that have these allegations. I don't think all of them are telling the truth. I, I think, you know, again, 22 women sounds a little crazy to me, but I, we can't also dismiss them and make it seem like all of them are lying either. I think there's some truth there. The, the difficulty is finding out where the truth is and where the lies are and then trying to separate the two. And like you said, for those that are telling the truth, it's unfortunate because yeah. they should be able to get justice without having to worry about people questioning, you know, their validity and, and if they're telling the truth at all. So I think that's why they decided to go civil. And, you know, it's, it's an ugly situation. Deshaun Watson is very young, man. He's 26 years old. This, this thing has a lot of layers to it. And like, like we started off the conversation by saying we need more details because his livelihood could be at stake here. You know, let's not forget, you know, the NFL, the way it's structured, the way contracts are structured. If this thing goes really bad for him, the Texans probably have the loopholes already in place to walk away from that deal. Yep. And as we said, a lot of times the, the black quarterback does not get multiple chances to redeem himself. Yes. You know, we, we've seen it with other, other players. Sometimes it isn't the quarterback but they struggle to find their way. And unfortunately in a league that is very unforgiving at 26 years old, we could see the the, the beginning of the end for his career if it doesn't go well. Yeah, and, and, and it sucks because, you know, either way, no matter how this thing turns out, even if it's it comes out that none of this is true, he's still going to have that stain on his image. And he's still going to be, it's still going to be hard to, to get past that because we, once again, we all know that the media coverage that you get when you are accused of something and the media coverage that you get when you are cleared of something never balance out. It, ju it just, it does not happen. It's always this big blown up thing. And then if it comes out that you didn't do it, then you get pushed back to the, to the middle of the newspaper where, you know, don't really show like that, but we don't get this whole big media frenzy when, you know, when, when it, when it, when it turns out the other way, I don't know how it's going to turn out in this situation. Um, I, you know, I would, I really hope for Deshaun Watson's sake that this thing is not true. Uh, you know, once I started seeing the numbers going up, I immediately started thinking about Bill Cosby and that situation because I feel like that probably is, you know, closer, not that close because I, because these women were accusing Bill of drugging him, obviously. But as far as the numbers and the amount of women that continue to come forward, I started thinking about Bill Cosby. Um, you know, and, and again, this is that this is this, this young man's career. Obviously, if he did it, you got to face whatever comes along with that territory. Um, but I really just hope because it's not like, you know, this is a situation where this is like an Antonio Brown, where we've seen repeated things going on. You know what I mean? Like, or, or one of those guys where we have seen repeated stuff that would lead me to be like, push me on the other side to say, you know what, he might have done this. With Deshaun Watson, we haven't heard anything. Like I haven't, I don't know if you have, but I haven't heard any any really negative, you know, stories about Deshaun Watson. So I feel like this kind of came out of nowhere, um, which is why I was, you know, leaning towards the other side. And I understand I do, I, I want to give the women the benefit of the doubt because you should never be afraid to speak your truth. Um, but I also understand that, you know, these things do happen. We, you know what I mean? We we saw we saw Pac had to go to jail. For 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 assault that he didn't even you know <laughs> partake in, so we know that these things happen. So you know, again, we're gonna we're gonna have to wait and see with this one. Um, you know, as you guys, as more information comes into us, we will get it out to you guys. Um, I just I just I just wish for a, a positive outcome to this situation. Absolutely. Like I said, we, we've got to take a wait and see approach ultimately and see how it plays out. But with that being said, let, let's transition a little bit. Let's lighten it up a little bit. NFL free agency kicked off a few days ago. Uh, a lot of moving and shaking. The Patriots were very active this week. Um, what, what was probably some of your favorite moves that you saw over the past few days? Um, okay, so I think for me, the biggest move that I saw, and I understand the Patriots dropped a whole bunch of money on different guys, which I love. I think that's going to help with uh, help Cam Newton out. Um, I think I don't even think they're finished yet. 
Um, cause I know they just signed another tight end as well. Um, a third tight end, but I think the biggest move was the chief signing Joe Thune. Um, you know, we spoke, it was just, just, uh, it was the last week's show. We were like, yo, what are they doing? Releasing, they released both of their linemen, you know, Eric Fisher. And then we even, you know, we talked about the late season injuries and whatnot and the back problems and, and whatnot, but you bring in an all pro, uh, lineman who can play tackle and guard. That was, that would be huge for the chiefs because could you imagine, you know, when, they had to rotate everything for the Super Bowl when Fisher got injured after the, the at, during the Buffalo game, and it was just chaos. And we saw, you know, like you wouldn't think that moving a guy from guard to tackle to tackle a guard would be that much of a difference in your in your protection, but it was. And and they got dog walked by the Tampa Bay front four. So to bring in a guy like Joe Thune, who's all pro and can play either tackle or guard. I thought that was one of the, if not the biggest moves outside of Tampa being able to resign all of those guys. Cause we, you know, we didn't know how they were going to do it, but they were able to franchise Godwin. They re-signed Levante David for two years. They got Shaq Barrett locked in for four years. Uh, Gronk is back. You know what I mean? So, and there's like one of the two other guys that they're, they're going to see about, we, we don't know what's going to happen with um, and Dominica Sue just yet and Antonio Brown, but they were able to re-sign a lot of guys. But I think that that Joe Dooney sign up for me just because of the Chiefs are still probably the favorites to, you know, to come out of the, the, the AFC and, you know, play for Super Bowl and, and maybe even ultimately win a Super Bowl. I think that, um, that that was the biggest sign up. I still I'm still a bit confused by uh, Juju, though, because maybe, you know, I can understand. All right. You don't want to go to the Ravens. Maybe, you know, whatever the history between the Ravens and the Steelers. But to take less money to come back to the Steelers and you don't want to go to the Chiefs who are in the last two Super Bowls and there's a good chance they'll be in this Super Bowl and your best season statistically came when you had a number one on the other side of you by the name of Antonio Brown, who, guess what, is pretty similar to Tyreek Hill. They're about the same size. They, you know, they do a lot of the same thing. They're both quick, speedy uh, wide receivers, and you would have fit right in with an all-pro offense all the way around the board. All-pro quarterback, all-pro wide receiver, all-pro tight end, all-pro lineman, and I thought that would have been the perfect fit. I was a little bit confused by that. That might have been the worst move for me. Yeah, so I agree with you. I, I like what the Chiefs did. Um, shows you how much changes in a week, right? Because last week we were wondering <laughs> what direction are they going, and, and they go get Joe Thune, uh, they get Kyle Long, who came back out of retirement. He sat out last year. And so, and then they're expected to get uh, Duvernay Terra back, the doctor, offensive lineman. So their old line looks a lot better. Um, I like what the Patriots did in terms of quality. Like I know it looks good and it's flashy because they signed the best two tight ends, but Matthew Judon, I think is the perfect linebacker for their system. A guy who can get after the quarterback and cover. Um, he showed that versatility in Baltimore. So Bill's gonna know how to use that. I like Jalen Mills for them as well. Again, another guy who's versatile, play safety, play some corner. Bill loves those type of guys that he can mix and match around based on the, on the package and formation that you throw out at them. Um, Juju is, is very confusing to me um, for a number of reasons. One, you took less money to go back. Um, Big Ben didn't look good last year. So what am I taking less money to go back to? Like, am I expecting to boost my value by playing another year in that offense that I didn't look good in last year? And if I was gonna take less money, why not wait it out, like you said, and land in a situation with a better quarterback and a better offense, whether it was Aaron Rodgers, whether it was Patrick Mahomes, you had options with better quarterbacks. You could have gone to Seattle because Seattle ended up using their money on, on a tight end, Gerald Everett, who I like, but I'm sure they would have in, been interested if Juju wanted to go there for five or $6 million. Yes. So I think, I, I, I think Juju completely dropped the ball on his opportunity. And again, his numbers weren't impressive last year. And I don't think his numbers are going to be impressive this year. Because he's not a true number one receiver. He, he's not. He's not a true number one. I think we, we know that. And I just don't understand what him or his agent were thinking by going back to Pittsburgh. If I'm Juju at his age, I want to play with a, an elite quarterback who's, who's got enough time to, to elevate me over the next two to three years. And Big Ben isn't that guy. So I don't get that move from them at all. Um, there were a couple other moves I didn't understand either. Like I... I didn't get what the what the Titans were doing with Bud Dupree. Bud Dupree, I believe he tore his ACL in the second half of last season. 
So he won't even be ready for the start of the season, but they, they gave him $50 million. And I just don't get it. I mean, he played on a really good Pittsburgh defense. We know Pittsburgh has playmakers all over the place. But most importantly, Bud Dupree was opposite of T.J. Watt. So he was getting a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities and, and taking advantage of them. Ain't no, ain't no T.J. Watts in, in Nashville. They, they ain't got that caliber of player on their defense. And so for them to overpay for a guy who, to me, is kind of a one-trick pony, like say he can only get to the quarterback and he's probably going to miss the start of the season after that injury, I didn't understand that move for them. Um, I thought Seattle, again, did well by getting Gerald Everett because I like the receivers they have with Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf. And now you add a versatile tight end into the middle of that. Uh, for Russ, it's, it's more weapons. And they bring Chris Carson back, which is good as well. They needed to keep their running game. Yes. So I, I think those teams have done well for themselves. I'm interested also within your division. Um, Dallas took a lot of losses in being able to bring back Dak. Their, their secondary took some hits. Their old line isn't as good, and they didn't upgrade their old line. But I, I like what the Washington football team did by getting Curtis Samuel and getting Fitzpatrick. I think the division over there got more competitive as well. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, although uh, Fitzpatrick has inconsistencies, you know, I, I love him, man. I still, you got to love Fitz Magic, man. Like, what, what are you going to say to that? Um, he's a definite upgrade over everything they had at quarterback last season you know no disrespect to Alex Smith but I, I didn't expect him to come back and play like he did prior to that series of an injury so no disrespect to him but he's definitely upgrade over everything they have um they still you know they they got a uh, McLaurin so they in uh and uh was it Logan Thomas so they got a couple of a couple of guys young guys that can catch the football they have a solid running game and we know what that defensive line <laughs> is so I, I love the pickups for them um I, I, you know, I like, I like, I like, you know, what the, what the Giants are doing as well. A little subtle moves here and there. They brought in uh, Devontae uh, Booker to, to at, at running back, which I thought was going to be good just because we don't know exactly when Saquon will be back and what Saquon will be back. Um, so I, I like that one. Um, I see that uh, they're looking at Galladay. I feel like the whole damn NFC East is looking at Galladay right now. And Baltimore is also looking at Galladay. If I had my choice, I mean, obviously, I would want him to go to either the Giants or the Ravens, you know, get the Eagles, who actually signed uh, Anthony Harrison, the safety from the Vikings, which I thought was a great pickup for them. Um, but I would rather Galladay go to the Ravens just because I feel like they're in a better position to to get to a Super Bowl and win a Super Bowl than the Giants are right now. And an and upgrade at wide receiver to have a solid number one could be the, the piece that pushes them over the hump because that's pretty much, I mean, the, the Ravens defense is, is going to be in the top five. Like they've been in the top five. I feel like for the past 20 years, the running game is number one for the past two, three years. And, you know, the only weak spot is that wide receiver. So if you could bring in Galladay, I think that'd be perfect for them. Um, but he's meeting with a couple of different teams. So we'll see how that goes. As far as Dallas goes, um, you know, listen, I, as much as we push for, you know, I, I wanted Dak to get his money because you got to get your money. But I'm, I was also pushing for that for selfish reasons as well, because I want you to suck up all of that cap space with Dak's uh, contract. Um, they are, however, talking about I, I, um, I was reading that they were talking about maybe trying to move Gallup and bring in Stefan Gilmore which I think if that was to happen, that would be a huge move for Dallas, even though they weren't able to really add anything to that offensive line. But if you could add Stephon Gilmore to your secondary, who is defensive player of the year two, you know, two years ago and, and bring him in, that would be crazy for, for, for the Cowboys. So again, there's still some moves that got to be made. There's a couple of free agents that are left and we don't know what's going to happen. You know, NFL draft is right around the corner. So I'm sure, you know, there's going to be a lot going on. There's still going to be a whole lot more trades and, and signings between between now and, and the NFL draft. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's going to be a very active offseason um, because there's a big discrepancy with the teams that actually have cap space and the teams that don't. And so you're going to see a lot of teams trying to unload salary and make moves. Um, and obviously all of that is because of COVID. COVID yes. really affected things. And now that we're seeing it in the cap, um, in terms of, of Galladay, I think Baltimore makes the, the most sense. They need they need the weapon. They need somebody opposite of Hollywood Brown and Mark Andrews. So I think he fits in well there. And as you said, that team is ready to compete right now. 
The Giants are in the upswing. We've spoken highly of the Giants throughout the season. And I like where Joe Judge is building there, but the Giants aren't quite there yet. Um, and I and I don't know if they even know if Daniel Jones is the long-term anti quarterback yet either. So with Baltimore, you have that stability. Their O line will be healthy, obviously, because they took some big hits on the O line at the end of last season. But with Lamar, with Mark Andrews, and with Hollywood Brown, I think if you add Gall- Galladay to that lineup, that becomes a pretty good offense right there as well. So I like them those there. Quarterbacks, those uh, those three situations. Like if I'm Galladay, I'm definitely not going to the Eagles because that nah, would be not. too much confusion and. As, as much as I want Jalen Hurts to, to do well, we don't know exactly what he'll be able to do. And they haven't addressed really their offensive line issues either. They really don't have any other weapons. You know, they got Goddard, but, you know, you yeah, know the Giants will be a little bit better, but I'm going to with the MVP quarterback and a team that, you know, was a, a game or two away from getting to the promised land. If he goes to Philly, it's purely for money. Yeah. It wouldn't be for anything else. But like I said, in like terms of fit, million. yeah, and in terms of fit, Baltimore is the best fit, I think. Um, and and the, the Gilmore thing is interesting because there's been some some stories that I've been hearing that Bill doesn't really want to trade Gilmore. Um, the conversation actually came up last year because Bill knew the team was kind of in a transitional phase after Tom left, and he was going to give Gilmore the opportunity to you know try to get on with a team that could compete for a Super Bowl. But now that they've made those moves, I wonder if that conversation will, will kind of lighten up um, because they've got a good secondary, you know, with Gilmore, with uh, JC Jackson, with the McCordys, they've got a lot of guys that Patrick Chung actually decided to retire instead of come back, but they still got a very good secondary. So there is that flexibility that if a team is willing to give you a lot, I don't think Michael Gallup will be enough just for Stephon Gilmore, as you said, because oh. Gilmore, Gilmore, uh, a previous defensive player of the year and, and still playing at a very high level, Pro Bowl level, yeah. you would probably want a couple picks um, for him. But if you move on from him, I'm sure the package would have to be right because Bill doesn't just walk away from guys when they're still good. It, his track record has always been, and aside from Tom, and Tom is the exception because of his age, but Bill's track record has always been when a guy leaves New England, it's because he's towards the end of his career. He doesn't have much. Tom would have been the same thing because Tom is towards the end of his career. It just so happened and right. he isn't in the ideal situation. Correct. Correct. Him. And, 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 you know, since we're talking about organizations that know what they're doing, one organization that has absolutely no idea what they're doing is the Texans. Um, in typical Texans form, they signed Tyrod Taylor and then they traded a, a draft pick to get Ryan Finley. So if you keep him square at home, they signed a center, they signed Ryan Lindsley from, from the Packers, which looks good on paper. Like, oh, okay, you get a center. And then we're going to trade away a draft pick for a third string quarterback and then sign a backup quarterback. So great job by you guys not being able to execute anything of, of relevance there. Yeah. I, I don't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't understand that one either. Oh, last one, last signing, which could possibly be a good pickup. If there's anything left in the tank, the, the AJ green uh, signing with the, with Arizona, um, you know, I mean, we're talking about a former all pro wide receiver with AJ green, but he hasn't been able to stay healthy the past three seasons. So I'm still, you know, up in the air. And I like AJ Green. Like he, you know, with the, the 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 all pro years, I had him on my fantasy team. He was kicking ass for me. But, you know, the past couple of years, it's like he's been hurt every year. He's missed chunks of the season. So I don't know which AJ Green the Cardinals are going to get. Um, but you know, if it works out, hey, it works out. Hopefully it does. You know, I always want, I want brothers to do their best unless you play for the Cowboys. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely. I mean, he, he, he was a great player before the injury struck. Yeah. Um, I don't think he's fully, well, I don't think last year anyway, he was fully recovered from the ankle injury, uh, but he struggled and he's really struggled the last three seasons. One of those he missed entirely because of the ankle. So I don't know how much he really has left in the tank. He was never a big explosive receiver down the field. He was more of a physical guy. Yeah. So maybe him and, and D hop make that work in that sense where he's the physical guy and D hop is allowed to go down the field. But if Fitzgerald comes back, they might be the oldest wide receiver core. <laughs> I mean, if Fitzgerald comes back, that's one of them teams that would have looked great on Madden like six years ago. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What? <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't, I don't think he has much left in the tank, honestly. And I think they're just kicking the tires and hoping he does, but I, I really don't think he has much. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, with the whole Deshaun Watson situation, I want to go back to that really quick because we, because we, you know, we addressed the outside of football with that, but within football, 
there's still a lot that has to has to go on. There's still teams that are interested and, and willing to to give up the farm to bring Deshaun Watson in. Um, now he does have a no trade clause, so he can pick whichever team he goes to. But this whole situation might make it so that he has to waive that no trade clause just because of everything that's been going on. So I think this is going to be very interesting as we get closer to the draft. I'm going to keep a close eye on this and, uh, and, and, and just, just to see, because it could get real tricky. Um, you know, and if, if, if I'm the Texans and all this stuff is going down now, I, I might kind of be looking into the, at the, looking at the jets and try to maneuver something with the jets and get that second overall pick from the jets and get, you know, you know, even if they, if they got to take a little bit less than they would have taken, for um you know for Deshaun Watson and just you know just try to get him listen um you don't have to wave that no trade clause if you want yeah, to the, say the word the, the the Jets to me are are where the draft really starts because we know Trevor Lawrence is going number one I yeah. think we've known that I don't but think if, that, that 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 are the Jaguars would give up that pick right but if if the Jets decide to hold the pick and let's say let's say they do believe Sam Darnold is their quarterback of the future and they don't take a quarterback at number two or they trade that pick away, that's where everything I think starts to move around because then if you look at the next teams after that, it gets tricky. I don't think Miami's drafting a quarterback. Um, Not too well. I don't think Atlanta's drafting a quarterback because they just restructured uh, Matt Ryan's deal. So it looks like he's going to be there at least for two more years. Um, and then, like I said, it, it trickle down effects. Cincinnati at number five is not taking a quarterback, no. right? <laughs> so um, you got Carolina at, at number seven. You know, you got like teams there. Detroit maybe takes a quarterback, but I don't know because they still got Jared Goff on the contract for a few years. So it, it gets tricky. I think to me, it starts it starts with the Jets. And like you said, everybody's still willing to give something up for Deshaun because at the end of the day, it's a business. And he's a guy who can still perform, you know, no matter how you feel about him off the field, on the field, he does his job. He does it very well. So there's still going to be a lot of intrigue there. Yeah, and, and I think one of the things that you mentioned earlier as far as with criminal charges is a lot of this stuff is just words as opposed to actually physically, with exception to the one that they said he 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 may give oral sex to. Um, but outside of that, it's like, all right, well, yeah, he's probably gonna look like the, the biggest creep, but there's a lot of a lot of big creeps in in sports. Like let's let's not let's not forget. The, the back-to-back years, Roethlisberger was in, you know, accused of stuff in them bathrooms. We we don't talk, we don't talk about that, but but you know, but whatever. But I'm just saying, we conveniently but, forget that one, right? Yeah, exactly. We, but we conveniently a, forget. I mean, even though the league suspended him four games because they felt there was enough evidence to prove yeah. that he did something, but, but we don't like to talk about that one too exactly. much. Exactly. But yeah, so he'll just be on the list of creeps. Like at the end of the day, like I, I, I like, and it's and it's sad, Eric, but I know that the owners are looking at this like, all right, he didn't really actually sexually assault. It wasn't too bad. So we could still bring him in and look, it's, it's Deshaun Watson. He's still top five quarterback, maybe even top three as far as skill sets and what he can do. So let's just, you know, let's just let the smoke clear down and then we could bring him on in. Yeah. I, I guarantee you this though, most of the owners around the league don't have no damn moral compass in these type of situations. Oh, we know that. We, we, we it, know that. Exactly. We know so that. we 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 just had an owner who was in a massage parlor a few years ago. Exa- exactly. So it, it, you know they they not worried about that. This business as usual. That's always been the NFL's model. So we know how it's gonna go down, man. But let, let's transition, man. Let's get into some NBA talk. Yes. Because now please. we're getting to that point in the NBA season where I can say if the playoffs started today. The Knicks would be in the playoff. Trip, don't spit your drink out. Don't. I'm being dead serious when I say that. I early in the season it was a joke, but now that we're into that latter third of the season, we're, we're at that point. Killing me. All right. All right. There's listen. There's moves being made. Right. PJ Tucker is going to Milwaukee. He finally gets out of Houston. They they've lost 19 straight in a row. They are disgusting over there. Uh, Trevor Reza gets traded for Myers Leonard, who we talked about Myers Leonard. Now he ain't going to play, but they got him up out of Miami. Yeah. They moved on from him. And then maybe one of the biggest impact injuries or two of them, actually, I shouldn't say biggest two of them. Anthony Davis looks like he's about to come back. Mm-hmm. KD is closer to returning, but Steph's on his way out. 
Steph yeah. looks like he's going to be out a little bit with, with a bruised tailbone. They were able to win last night, but right now they're tied for the eighth seed. How big of an impact is this injury to uh, Steph to the Warriors? Honestly, I look at this as a, as a blessing in disguise. You might, if, if, if I'm the Warriors, you know, barring, I don't know if they're looking how, how, you know, thoroughly they're looking into trades, but they do have some assets that they can trade away. Um, but they're not a they're not a championship team, and I'm not sure if there's a trade that they can make right now to bring someone in a superstar level talent that would help them. Where I could say, all right, I could see them getting past the second round of the playoffs. Like right now, honestly, the way the team is constructed, I don't even know if I feel confident saying they'd make it out of the first round of the playoffs. Because if you got to play uh, either LA team the way Utah is looking right now, because they're going to be at the bottom of the, you know, they're not, they're, I don't, I don't, I don't see them getting to sixth place. So now it's, you know, and it's just to fifth place rather. So now we're talking about, about, uh, you know, six, uh, six and seventh and eighth. I don't see them getting out of the first round of the playoffs anyway. So this might be actually be a blessing in disguise and where, you know, listen, just, wherever the chips fall and just work on them draft picks, get you another high draft pick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you got Wiseman last year. Maybe you can get somebody else, you know what I mean? This year, um, you know, it sucks because Steph was balling this season, you know, looking like Steph and looking like MVP uh, Steph. And this injury was crazy. It was kind of freakish because he kind of just tripped and fell backwards and he fell on his, on his, on his butt. But, you know, you wouldn't think that, you know, because you got a lot of cushion back there. So you wouldn't think it would have been that crazy. But, he's you know, he's going to be out indefinitely. You know, like you said, he did win last night. Um, but I don't think that's something that, that will be able to be sustained without Steph there. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not – Draymond ain't going back to defensive player of the year, Draymond. You know, and I don't – I just don't see enough from these other guys. As good as I, – I think Wiggins kind of changed the narrative on his career – being in Golden State, and maybe it's the culture there, the coaching, you know, where he was able to kind of turn things around. But even with that, I don't see enough there for for me to be like, all right, yeah, they can still hold it down and weather the storm. Especially if if you're talking about Steph is going to miss a two, let's, even if if it's just two weeks that Steph is going to miss, the amount of games in them two weeks and and where you could drop in rankings from that point is just like, you know, is it really is is it, is it really worth it? So we might, maybe we might want to just, you know, kind of take this thing out again. Yeah, I, I don't think, I, I never viewed them as a title contender, um, especially without Clay. Uh, you know, we thought they could be a playoff team, but not a title contender. Um, I mean, for the fans, it robs us more than anything. It would have been exciting to see Golden State possibly in a first round series and Steph doing Steph type things and, you know, shooting and all that. And, and, the, and the legacy they've kind of built up there. But um, I think they're in trouble but I, I don't think it really matters where, the, where they land with the draft. I think they want to try to get into the playoffs. I think they want to try to reestablish themselves as a playoff caliber team. But let's not forget, they have Minnesota's first round pick. So, and Minnesota right now has the worst record in the league. So they're going to have a lottery pick regardless of what they do um, with, with their own team. They've got that Minnesota unless top, pick. Unless it's a top three pick. Right. So I, I think, well, they got the protections on it this year. And then next year it's completely unprotected. So I, I think they're in good shape there no matter what. I don't know if they were going to make a big splashy move this year. I think they were going to try to wait it out and, and try to flip that pick later on. Like you said, Wiggins has turned his career around a little bit. Kelly Oubre has been a solid addition. And I think they were looking at it like, hey, if, if we can make sure Clay is fully healthy next year, maybe we take this pick with one of those guys and flip them and then have that core of Wiseman, Steph, Clay, and whoever we can go get. Um, but ultimately for the fans, we're the ones that get robbed because though I don't think they, they can beat the Lakers in the first round or Utah in the first round, it would have been nice to see Steph take on the challenge. Oh, yeah. I, I, I would have, I would have loved to see, you know, a Utah golden state series with Utah favorites win, but knowing that Steph could flip this series just by having a couple good shooting nights. So from that standpoint, we get robbed a little bit, but what are your thoughts on, on PJ Tucker to Milwaukee? Do you think it's enough for them to get out the East? Because to me, that's the only thing that matters with Milwaukee. I don't want to hear nothing else about Milwaukee if they're not coming out of the Eastern Conference. Eric, why are you asking me these questions? You know damn well this, this ain't enough for them to get out of the Eastern Conference. The hell is P.J. Tim Tucker, the guy with the best sneaker collection in basketball? And, it, and, I'm, and I'm saying this respectfully. 
PJ Tucker coming to Milwaukee is not something that he don't scare nobody. Nobody looked at this move and said, yo, Milwaukee, though? They might be back. Nobody says that, bro. Nobody said that. They, <laughs> they didn't say it like that. They might be back. <laughs> Nobody says that, bro. This is not enough. I don't and honestly, even if you like, you know, you go back to the beginning of the season when they were supposed to get Bogdanovich, that wouldn't even been enough for me to be like, yo, Walker, you gotta watch out for these guys. Nah, I'm sorry. PJ Tucker is not the answer. PJ Tucker may have been a, been good on the Lakers, Brooklyn, because you know they can use another three and D type of player, maybe even the Clippers. Um, and I'm talking about as far as championship contenders go, maybe even Utah. He might have been good, you know, a little extra help in Utah. You know, they, they're a pretty good defensive team, but you can always use a good three and D player, veteran in the playoffs. But as far as Milwaukee goes, it's just not enough. And that's with, and I think, you know, I think, you know, Chris Middleton is looking at another 50, 40, 90 caliber season. I think Drew Holiday is, is really good. I think Chinzo is, is starting to come into his own. We know what Giannis is, but it's not enough. If you have to face a healthy Philadelphia 76ers or a healthy Brooklyn Nets team, it is not enough. And you guys couldn't even get past a healthy Miami team last year. So I, there's nothing that <coughs> excuse me, would lead me to believe that PJ Tucker is going to be with the the guy that gets y'all over the hump and gets y'all and gets Giannis to his first NBA Finals. I'm sorry, I cannot see that. It is still the 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 Finals is is either going to go through Philadelphia or Brooklyn. That is it. So for the record, it's not enough. Yeah, not enough. <laughs> it's not enough. <laughs> sorry, not enough. Speaking speaking of not enough, Kyle Kuzma made a statement this week that that has some people wondering. Has has LeBron James received enough MVPs from the league? Should he have more MVPs? Now, I'm going to start off by saying this. For, for people, I know the, the debate will be, well, he's the best player in the league. The best player in the league doesn't mean you win the MVP every season, right? Oh. It's a it's a season-by-season season award. There's a narrative that's built up around it. And sometimes guys who exceed their expectations get thrown into the conversation. We, we saw it in 2013 when Melo, I believe, finished third in the voting behind LeBron for MVP. We knew Melo wasn't the best player in the league. We know we knew Melo wasn't a top three player at that time. He might have been a top five, but he wasn't a top three player. However, he had that outstanding season. I will say, I think there's only two seasons I could think of that Braun should have won MVP that he did. Last year, I thought he was on the verge of winning MVP before the season got shut down. Yes. And 2010, his first year with Miami. I think we were so caught up on it on the idea. And that was Steve Nash, the year Steve Nash won it. No, that was Derrick Rose. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I think that year, those are the only two years I could think of. And the 2010-2011 season, the only reason he did not win it was because the media was so upset that he went to Miami. But had he won it that year, he had won it the two years prior, and he won it the two years after, we would have been talking about Braun winning five straight regular season MVPs. Those are the only two seasons I could think of that he deserved it. Other than that, I think he has the right amount. Yeah, I, yeah that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I definitely agree um that he should have more but he's not the only one i also feel like mj should have more so it's it's not something where this doesn't happen because again you know we just we've seen it happen with the other guy that we consider you know the the, the goat you know what i mean like where mj should have got more mvp awards so it happens you know again and, and i think lebron said it best you know it's it, it, yeah, I should have, but I'm not sitting up here losing sleep at night because they didn't give me the extra MVP award. You know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, I think I think those two years and last last year was kind of a freak situation. So I'm not I'm not even really mad at that one because I don't I, I I don't feel like LeBron was robbed. I feel like COVID came in and shut everything down. Had LeBron the season continued the way it was, LeBron had the momentum going. And I feel like he would have ultimately surpassed Giannis. But because of that, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not really too mad at it. Yeah, the Derrick Rose one, yeah, I agree with you. Absolutely. I think that it was based off the decision. And you, again, I think you could argue one of those Steve Nash um, uh, MVP awards that where LeBron could have could have gotten it too. But, you know, it, like I said, it is what it is. It happens. Yeah, the, the Nash ones, to me, actually, I always look at it like he took one away from Kobe. Um and then 
you know, again, like you said, there are certain guys who deserve more. Kobe's only got one. And we know Kobe it deserved more than one regular season MVP, but the narrative sometimes takes over. But I think LeBron has has received his just due. We all know he's the best player in the league. Yeah. Nobody's questioning that. And, and even with that, Eric, before we move on, and I and I gotta say this because that's you know, the similar situation is with real fans, real talk. We know all of the years that we probably should have gotten awards that we didn't get the ones that we should have have gotten, but you gotta continue to move on and do what you do. And because of that, we're actually, you know, nominated again. We're in the finalist again in the running for the Be Entertaining Award um, at the Be Free Awards this year, which is going to be virtual. You know, I got the email and, you know, so we're one of the finalists. So we'll see how that goes this year. So maybe this might be the year where LeBron gets his 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 next MVP award and we get our next television award. And I, then I feel like, you know, all will be right in the world. Then, yeah, it's all about balance. You're right. You just give us some time and it work itself out. Um, before we wrap up, though, a couple of points we want to make. Uh, Yankees and Mets have um, officially stated they will have fans in the stadium this year. I believe they said something about 20 percent capacity. Yes, which is which is good. We know how much the city loves baseball, and because I go of both to a game, bro, I want to. Oh, go. I'm getting to a game. I, 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 I've already started to look at tickets. I'm not going to say okay. what they're looking like, but I've already started to look. So we got to get out to a game. Um, however, there won't be any fans at the Tokyo Olympics. They're barring um, fans from coming to the to the to the event and the venues, and we understand why. The Olympics are a big deal, and obviously with what's going on in the world, you've got to still play it safe. So we won't have any fans there. Um, NCAA tournament officially kicked off. However, in, in typical NCAA fashion, they, they didn't take care of everybody. Yeah. Uh, there was a video that surfaced of what the men's workout facilities looked like compared to the one rack of weights that the women were given. <laughs> NCAA, you got to do better, baby. You have to do better than that. Treat the women right. Oh man, that that was embarrassing, bro. Like that was so embarrassing when 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 I saw the, the difference. First of all, that ain't no damn workout facility. You threw some dumbbells on a rack and said, "Here, go have fun." That that is some BS. In the words of of, of the, the the great Dave Chappelle, Bloomberg is in up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> NCAA, y'all definitely got to do better, man. Um, Trip, oh, and also before we wrap up, I don't know why they did it, but the Mets added uh, Governor Steve Christie, uh, Chris Christie to the uh, board of directors. Uh, he ain't making no decision. I don't know what he's really there for. Does he have any like experience, like baseball experience? Like, I don't even, like, I was confused by that. Yeah. I, I yeah you're the Mets fan, so I wanted to get your take on it. I, I, I have no idea what he's <laughs> expected to do, what he's bringing to the table. Only, only thing I've known, only time I've ever seen him associated with sports is when he sent with Jerry Jones in the owner's box. That's it. I, I didn't, I didn't get that one either. I was confused. Yeah. I thought maybe you had some better insight. Yeah, <laughs> man. my my intel is lacking on this one. Ain't ain't no intel on this one, man. But before we wrap up, trip, go ahead, man. Send it away and shout out the sponsors on this one. Oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, first of all, thank you to all of the sponsors: Petro Home Services, uh, Kmart, the Rosado Firm, Soundview Liquors. Um, make sure that you guys are following us on all our social media. Twitter, Instagram is at Real Fan Talk. Facebook is facebook.com forward slash Real Fans Real Talk. Uh, subscribe to that YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash For The Fans Productions. And um, if you are not in the New York City area and you can't watch on Thursday nights from 8 to 9 p.m. on Verizon 43, do not worry. Because you can always watch it right there on the website. Just go to realfansrealtalk.com, right on the homepage, click that little red button on Thursday night, and you can watch from anywhere in the world. And um, make sure you guys are subscribed to the Real Fans Real Talk podcast, the Sanchez Show podcast, and um and our and and our and our other brother podcast, Shooting the Shit podcast. We are on pretty much every major streaming platform out there. So go out there, man, get involved, subscribe, drop us an email, drop us a note, drop us a comment. Let us know how you're feeling, man. Because uh, in, in, in the words of Uncle Ralph, how he told y'all a couple years ago, we ain't going nowhere. That's a fact, man. And hey, for Trip Young, I am Legend of Two Games. This is Real Fans Real Talk with the Sanchez Show. And we out of here. Peace. Live from the camp. Uh huh. This is Hi, Real Fans. Yeah. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course Real fans, real talk, we the illest
Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought Real fans, real talk, reporting live from the cam High in demand, so please stand by if you can What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans On court, talking sports through the eyes of the fans With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez You heard what I said, we elite Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat Keep us in your topics and uh-huh. we ahead of the Yo. streets It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9 For the older folks, so even if you younger No matter what sport, this show, we got it covered It's filmed live in the middle of BK So ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays What's up guys, I'm Emerald Marie And be sure to check us out on the web at realfansrealtalk.com